So welcome to today's tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at how to create symmetry adapted linear combinations. And we'll also try to see if we can create a molecular orbital picture for pi bonding in aromatic ring systems. That is one topic which we have not covered in regular classes. So let me cover a little bit of that in today's tutorial. So tutorial nine, where we'll be discussing about pi bonding in aromatic ring systems. So we are well aware of an example of benzene, right? Which is a famous aromatic ring system. There are several other examples, which we know that it's one of the Kekulé structures is this, and the another one, which is the resonating structure is this, right? So if you look at the ring system, it looks something like this. So we have six sigma bonds between the adjacent carbon atoms, and then we have PZ orbitals lined like this, right? Perpendicular to the plane of the board. So if benzene molecule, it's a flat molecule, if it is lying in the plane of the board, the PZ orbital, each of the PZ orbital is perpendicular to the plane of the board. Now these PZ orbitals, each one of this has a single electron. So that's how it makes three bonds and these three bonds are resonating in nature. And the bond order between the adjacent carbon carbon is one and a half. So one is coming from sigma bond, half of it is coming from pi bond, right? So now let us see how do we use group theory to actually look at how these PZ orbitals will combine to give you a molecular orbital picture or the bonding picture for pi bonds, okay? So we have already looked at sigma bond examples in CH4 example. The similar thing will apply here also, but pi bond we have not looked at. So let us see how do we look at pi bonds. So for pi bond, let me go back to CH4. So in case of CH4, we actually, made arrows like this to use our basis set, right? These were the four arrows. So along the direction of the sigma bond, starting from the central atom, going towards pendant atoms. So we used these four arrows as the basis set to create a reducible representation. In this case, the arrows which we will use will be perpendicular to the sigma bonds because these the pi bonds are actually formed by the perpendicular orbitals. So we will use something like this. So if this is my benzene molecule, if I'm looking from the sideways, so the arrows will be like this. These will be the six arrows which are perpendicular to this plane. Okay. And just for the reference, I have this is my XYZ. All right. Okay. So now this is called as vector basis. Same as here. So this is vector basis for pi bond representation. Now you can use this kind of approach in any of the system will later on see that let's say if we want to discuss the bonding of CO2 for sigma bonds, we'll take this type of arrows and for pi bonds, we'll take this type of arrows, okay, perpendicular arrows. So this is just an example. So now let us see that how do we take these arrows and create a basis set. So what is my D6, the point group here is, let me write down point group is D6H. So let us see what happens to these arrows when we perform different symmetry operations under D6H point group. Okay. So this is my D6H point group and these are my symmetry operations under this. 2C3, then I have C2, I have 3C2 primes. 3C2 double primes, 
we must know the location of each and every asymmetry operation by now so i'm not going to tell you which is where now 2s3 2s6 sigma h 3 sigma d and 3 sigma v now this is my tau pi okay now what happens to six vectors when i do e operation none of the vectors will change so i will say the character under e will come out to be six remember that we have discussed that if none of the vectors will change it will be six number of vectors that will change will give you the value over here so if six vectors remain unchanged six if zero vectors remain unchanged that means all of them are changing the value will be zero so if i'm doing c6 operation i am rotating this by 360 by 6 that is 60 degrees so if i rotate it by 60 degrees all of these will go to adjacent places that means the character will come out to be zero right similarly if i do c3 operation it will be zero c2 operation will be zero because all the vectors will be moving to alternate positions now if i am doing c2 prime so c2 prime is axis which is going through opposite vertices right so if i'm doing this these vectors so this is let's say this is my c2 prime so these four vectors will be replaced with each other so that means they will not contribute towards this reducible representation whereas these two vectors will contribute but they will become negative right so i will have minus two corresponding to two vectors which are becoming negative now similarly if i have a c2 double prime which is going through opposite bonds let's say this is my c2 double prime then these three will be replaced with these three in the negative side so again this will be zero i everything will be replaced again so zero s3 it's a rotation reflection zero rotation reflection zero sigma h is now the molecular plane of benzene all of the vectors will remain at their own position but they will go from plus one state to minus one state so that means this will be minus six they will be reflected by the molecular plane right sigma d again this will be zero sigma v sigma v will be containing this c2 prime so this is my sigma v which is containing these two vectors so these two vectors will not change so that means two whereas these four vectors will change their positions right so this is my tau reducible for pi basis set now what happens if i reduce this so how do i get the component irreducible representation so what i have to do is i have to use reduction formula so this is actually one of the question in the assignment this week so i'm not going to tell you the answer for this but i will just tell you partial answer uh, so you have to use reduction formula to solve this so now you know how to create a reducible representation for this now what you have to do is use reduction formula to find out what are the component irreducible representations okay so there will be four such reducible representations tau 3 for example i don't know if it will be 4 or 2 or 5 or 6 okay now this you can easily obtain by just using the reduction formula and find out what is the answer now let's see when you want to create so let us say that assume i am not saying that it is correct because i am not telling you the answer for this so assume tau1 is a1g okay what are the irreducible representation so it has a1g let us say tau2 is e1g let us say tau3 is a2u tau4 is e2u i am just randomly writing four irreducible representations these are not the solutions random ir 
representations okay so this solutions you must find out in home assignment okay so i'm not going to tell you whether these are correct solutions or not these are not correct i can just tell you that the whole set may not be correct some of them may be correct some of them may not be correct okay so now what will be the next step so next step will be to apply projection operator right using any of this a1g let's say if you are taking a1g and let us do incomplete projection operator and what will be the projection operator applied on on any of the phi a okay now what was my basis set my basis set was let me call these as phi a phi b phi c phi d phi e and phi f so now i can use my projection operator corresponding to these four ir irreducible representations and use any of the basis vector right so how do we do that so for that we need to go to the character table and carry out all these operations so i'll just tell you one of the operations let us do it for once so for a1g li is 1 and the h value for d6h this will be i think 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 24 so this will be 24 okay now what else for a1g all the characters are positive so you will have 1 into e operating on phi a plus 1 into c6 operating on phi a plus again so you have to do it for all the operations because effect of c6 and the other operation which is generated by c6 will be different so you have to consider the other operation which is actually c6 5 phi a then what else do we have so this will be 24 such operations okay so c3 effect of c3 on to phi a and then effect of uh, c3 square on to phi a so it's a tedious calculation okay so you can see that already it's long but it is not difficult c2 phi a then i have uh, three c2s but i'll have to take each of them one by one so c2 prime let's say one on to phi a then c2 prime second operated on phi a c2 prime third operated on phi a plus c2 double prime one operated on phi a and so on so you can write all 24 operations here and their effect on to phi a okay now the answer to this you will get is what will be the answer so let us try to see if we can actually find out what will be the answer so answer will be projection operator a1g phi a 1 over 24 so let's say this is e operating on phi a will give you phi a c6 operating on phi a will give you rotate by 60 degrees so you will get let's say where so anti-clockwise rotation so phi a will go to phi f so you'll have phi f over here right so the new position is phi f okay now c6 5 so i will have phi b here then c3 if i do c3 operation so the point is that you can find out what this is going to be how many will be positive how many will be negative are there is 
going to be any positive or any negative so now you have to tell me what will be the answer to this once you complete the home assignment okay now similarly you have to do calculate the projection operator of a to u on phi a then projection of e1g on phi a and projection of e2u on phi a of course these values will be the actual or we can say let me just uh, correct this so what you have to do is you have to actually calculate projection of tau 1 phi a projection of tau 2 on phi a projection of tau 3 on phi a projection of tau 4 on phi a so this overall will give you this overall will give you the bonding of pi system in uh, resonating structures okay so resonating or ring structures this approach can be used for any of the ring system or any of the pi bonding system the only care that you have to take is that the vectors have to be perpendicular rest of the procedure is actually very much similar so for example in case of co2 i told that if you have to look for pi bonding so you have to look for the basis vectors which will be perpendicular to the axis the internuclear axis right okay so i think that is all so this covers pi bonding in aromatic ring system and if you have any doubt please do write to me on the discussion forum so that i can clear these doubts about this molecule and if there are any difficulties in generating these projections please do let me know so we can work it out again during discussion okay that is all for today this was a short tutorial because this particular topic was pending and so i thought i'll cover this topic in this tutorial all right that is all thank you